British Constitutional Union. With Scotland and England, and France and Spain, and Portugal, and guess. The French Empress. They went on with their ritual and drowned. Finally, I entered the lift. I pressed the lower ground floor. There was the brick wall. I pressed a button, but nothing opened. I pressed again, and my finger went into the wedges, and... I thumped it lightly with my fists and all of a sudden it opened. It was a brilliant piece of mortar, concrete and brick scenery, but scenery it was. A picture of her. There was a tunnel contained corridor. It stretched afar into the distance and in the chamber there, there were no clothes, nothing to indicate any, anybody at all. Uh, looking around I saw the area that was mainly dark. I began to walk up the cavern-like tunnel. There was a, there was sand on the floor and I saw oil. I, I looked at the map that, that Michael Cameron's note ha, had said, had written in blank, blank, the, the year was obscured, erased. It said, Richard Marble's tutelage. I would rule the world, this, this Zephyr of this kingdom, and have Suzanne. Still, I am, I am James Devine, and Michael Cameron, my other identity. I, I faked the ID and lost. As I stood on the coast, uh, uh, I threw the clothes and to one side and swam, naked, across into the blue to, to, to France. I was a cross-channel swimmer in 1922. Don't you remember Michael Cameron, J James Devine, Scottish and English and Jewish? I, I cursed as I stood before her. I wanted you dead, she said, as she hung there. Almost, she said. Her body was dismembered, truncated, what would be called skew whiff, and her arms were crucified, nailed into the sides, and they were taut and pulled back, and her hair, her hair... She went on, I heard her, the scream, the gurgling like a, a dead echo. So you could wander in and out of life for the rest of your days in living hell, telling your story for Lucifer, for what you did. Look! I looked at her. She was naked, burnt like an iron. I examined the side of her body, burnt like an iron that had been stamped like a clamp on her cleavage was a mark Y, and another on her womb, X, as if branded by a wanton bastard's lips, as I leaned forward to kiss. I stopped. What was I doing? I'd suddenly become absorbed taken in, sucked in, as if I leaned forward to examine. I was a doctor, a mama duke. M mama. I stuttered. I, I had trouble. I couldn't speak. I, I tried to examine the wound, and as I saw that she was nailed upon a cross, a door like Barabbas, the thief of spirit, I couldn't believe I, she was, I, I could see against the door she was framed. And the words above the said prostitute, 
Mary Magdalene. But I knew this was rubbish from my studies because I knew a prostitute, the word in old days, old Hebrew, was it meant muse, a muse. The word itself had been prostituted now, 2,000 centuries later. Now, and lied, lies, the statute books, the history books lied. The word meant she was a muse to Jesus. That's what the phrase meant, she who was his bride. And she had been crucified in my mind where Barabbas was and I looked at the picture and saw that it was branded by a wanton bastard's lips I heard the words I were they mine in a previous transmigration of soul I I wondered why she said I wanted you dead almost kept alive slightly in my voice box cut to ribbons as I could hardly speak and my neck bent over my breast my body and my voice changed as I knew I had witnessed the crime the crime down through the centuries since the beginning of the crucifying through the years of Judas and French revolutions and Bastille days and Princess de Lampel abominations and fishy in France and Italy had been given no due. Denmark, Bulgaria, the only ones had stuck up for you, I said as I looked at the mirror, the picture in entrance in which she stood and said you I, you cut my throat you are God or Satan she said with her last breath and I saw that she was indeed pregnant inside her invisible temple of her womb was a baby that was called who H. Who? H. The words, the letters appeared, the word W H O appeared in my mind across her navel, across her belly, as I could see through the x ray. A doctor I was, a surgeon, as I held it up against this wall, against this door, and I saw the baby, the child, curled like a serpent, a snake, murdered, screaming, the form, the curled form of a baby, the inheritor, the dauphin, murdered in the world. I have recorded this story as I have recorded this story as it arose out of investigations into the biggest corporation swindle of the 21st century far exceeding the South Sea bubble case of the 19th century a penthouse was opened eventually and the 49th floor had been inherited by well, I will tell you further by Annie, uh, but first there were notes found in the uh, basement and attic, and I, I reproduce them here in terms of sound because they formed a a, a pillar, a, a fourth pillar of the chateau in which the the corpse was found. Many years later, after they did rebound, and I noticed a poem began. A spring, a, 
a source, a, a stream began to flow, to begin to overflow as I write these notes, about these notes, on these notes of the body that was found at the entrance and recorded here, concealed the identity of the memory behind which she lived. These doors, these walls were taken down brick by brick. There'd been cracks like a tree, the branches of a tree. An artist had painted watercolours over. The artist was... Episode 1 of Act 1 of Define and Provide Inside the Womb Come up, Sarge, come up, Sarge Coming, 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 coming uh, Coming, Sarge <laughs> Notes. This is the body in front of the slab. Right. I was looking at this statement, the woman's DNA. Catherine the First. It was very interesting. I was also reading history. Do you know the handwriting? She looked haggard. The ancient formula. Did it come from the Aborigines? The Aboriginals? The originals? The original man and woman. Transmits. The chips in. Transmits. She stood like a statue and scattered three postcards. Over the round table, the bar table, which had changed from rectangular to round and spun like a Catherine wheel as she threw the cards one by one, one by one, reaches out to your destiny, she said. The rake of the Holy Grail. Only a church could be seen that somehow captured the man's mind when he had looked. It was only the structure in the sky that revealed its spire. Stung into his vision had been a prisoner going over the top of the trenches. The snow was falling heavily and large flakes pelting. It had commenced raining, and this water, combined with the uranium and the chemicals that the Martians wore, poured down on all around in vapours that had been analysed hastily by Army Command in its central laboratory, had taken to the atmosphere and suffocated and blinded the soldiers in despair. Little specks of luminous glaring iron filings that appeared on the tunics of the soldiers contained this radium and ate into their skin. Retching was prevalent and prisoners had killed officers and soldiers with fixed bayonets that had been issued to them with rifles by the Martians when they came upon the soldiers where they fell. heard the water dripping and this is what I was listening to in the courtroom. This history had spliced in as Anastasia stood before me. Limp. Quiet now. As I read on, the scroll appearing before me. The man who was an officer and continued to watch himself in the dream that he saw as if a nightmare seen by an objective bystander detached as he observed it as if it unwound on the channel of a television had drawn his revolver. 
He had looked at the very point of the bayonet raised by the prisoner, as if it were an ugly dagger that he held above him, with his name written on it and heart printed on the very point of the circle of minute concentrated area that formed the pinnacle that was the tip of the bayonet. The map of its veins seemed to have already been skewered by it, and it still pumped, and the blood ran from ran from it halfway up the steel, as if its centre had been killed. God help me, the man heard the voice in his mind say. Please answer my plea. Mary, Magdalene, Jesus. And then he raised the revolver and shot. The prisoner went down. And still they came on. They seemed to suggest... Uh, uh, they seemed to suggest a swarm. A disease of bandaged heads of lepers who had gone mad and wished to kill all before dawn. The motley crew of cutthroats progressed as it programmed in the insane world of the mad, gurgling in the pits of their throats. Pitiful notes that were cries, cries, mama, mama, cries of bleatings of sheep that had, had their throats cut, ran all around, mama, mama, as if by rote, their heads down, distilling these sounds of gutted entanglement of voice box and the knife. But the spirit moved across. In the face of death, it was there. It moved in the air. There was a sound of silence. As the voices and shrieks and stultified suffocating of the leper-like prisoners seemed to reach their peak of horror, and the impediments that choked their sounds reached crescendo and disappeared. The man had raised a revolver and shot and shot and picked off his assailants, bringing them to the ground. For a moment he had seen a member of these regiments of renegades, who he thought he had recognised. There was a look in his eyes that caught his awareness, brought it home to his intelligence. The white areas were scarred, and the pupils elongated and dilated. It appeared as if they were staring, friendless, starved of love, exiled and isolated from a superior being. Existence seemed to have fled from indwelling. I was the living dead. A damned soul divided from my maker. Fear crossed my eyes from side to side as I approached, and the fires of his eyes had contained fibres of the characteristics of the terrified. His soul had been in torment, but was it the soul of the measurements, of the instruments, of implementation, of the definitions, and perimeter of the lethal gases that were administered by the Martians' agents, the detectives? I now remembered... He now remembered, for I, he had begun to recall, I had begun to recall the events, the details of, that had been spliced into my space-time, circumstances of his, his, her, of her, my arrest, our arrest, when he, I, had been brought in and attempts had been made to classify me. And her, my co-pilot, and could sign us to prison. The sergeant had said he was a prisoner, number nine. They'd stamped it across my breast, my uniform, my invisible stripes. And when I thought back to the events again, I remembered how I, I had combated the effects of this statement with the instrument of which the detectors had with which the detectors had subjected me by stamping me and deeming me seeing me as Christ and Magdalene for she my co pilot I, I had trouble perceiving the the words of vision as the the swirls as the, the vapours that they'd been inserted into my brain, creating a conflict within the realm. 
of my terrain that I use to control my me, myself, when I infiltrated in Mount Isa, the peak, the opening, the triangle. This Greek mythology explained was a symbol. What had been done had been a cause of suspension of the effects of the instrument, of the curtain, of space-time all around, the, the conditioning of the reduced, diminished, created by school, society, mind. The curtain had come down, but now raised, concentrated on it, conserved my identity and the perception of it, so that I could invent, prevent the danger of the everyday imagery, so that I could prevent the danger of the everyday imagery splicing in and blocking my infinite perception inculcating itself in a dim depression, a classifying dismal grey atmospheric misery that looked like the f outside window on this drizzling day, this perception caused the depression. The loss of beauty, the mayhem, had caused the loss of beauty, made him, myself, become one of them, a prisoner. If I could effectively imprison myself in these adopted measurements of daily misery and of conditioning of reading the newspapers of headlines of nothing ever eventuating, nothing ever resolving, being dragged through every day, nine to five, the same old newspaper headlines, only if the actor's names were substituted, for all I knew they were the same actor, the one person, as was I. Was there one person in this universe, or two? The other, of whom I read, was one. And they were just projected oppositions, roles, role plays, written about with different names and the same script. And every day it just went round and round and we bought the paper and read about it. He's looking after it, we would say. He's not doing much of a job of resolving anything. I mean, what is he going to resolve? We've got a deficit of what credits and debits of what? Money? Or debts from yesterday? The soul? Imprisoned to pay. The sergeant was outside the door of the jail. He banged on the bars. Another area in the area of the room in which I, I had entered. I'd been carried in by soldiers, by sailors, by detectives. He's got the measurements, they said. I can remember now. I remember hearing it. Yep. Throw him in. He's got the measurements. He's got the right measurements. He's got the measurements we want. It's one to ten. One to ten. He's prisoner number nine. Number nine. He'll face a trial. Take him for the judge. Take him before the judge. Get him a lawyer. One of ours. Well, there's no others anyway. There's no independent bar. Well, who needs it? We just have inquiries now. Well, yes, of course. But then give the inquiry. It has a verdict. It's published. Nobody resigns, nothing happens, and on we go. But what about Prishup?
It gives a verdict. Nothing happens. Nobody... R nobody... R You're becoming affected now, aren't you? It's this... It's the Martians. They're the Martians, aren't they? These sergeants, jailers, prisoners. They're the Martians, aren't they? They're just the Martians infiltrating my throat, garrot, wind down, passive, used to control him. You adopted it, you adopted it and it's you controlling yourself. You've taken it on to conform. Why? To conform, to be accepted. Well, I am accepted, aren't I? Yes, your peers love you. Well then, just take your place in your slot, your category, and go to work every day on the island from nine to five. And God's sake, for Christ's sake, read the bloody newspaper each day and don't complain. Look out that window, for God's sake. You're living on an island. There's the channel. There's the sea. It's been inserted into your brain, into his brain. And it just comes up, press a button each day, get out of bed, up it comes, have a shower, put on your coat, out you go, walk along the road, briefcase in your hand, cup of coffee, sit down, tap, 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 dictate letters, blah, 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 blah. He would effectively imprison himself, they had said. He had adopted the measurements and policed himself. Now he realised that was why he had become his own jailer, the sergeant. He'd become the island's jailer, his own soul's jailer. He was the field marshal, the prime minister, the one. He was number one. There was no need for others, no other wardens. He was number one. Prisoner number one who policed himself, was prime minister of himself on this island, in this attic, in this tower, overlooking the channel. Number one. The prisoners, they would blame themselves if they did not patrol the measurements and wouldn't want to escape. Oh, he, I had everything. A rubber pump. It ran from a keg, a barrel. All he did was turn it on. Clamp it to your mouth. Gulp. Beer came through. Sometimes wine. Not a bad, uh, not a bad calibre of beer or wine. Glug, 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 glug. And now, as he looked around, he saw the ten other prisoners. Himself in the mirror, he was lying on his back, facing the mirror. And the other nine were also, they were lying on their back. A record player went round and round, an old 1945. And yes, it was a neater day. Of course, that's the last thing he could remember. Anita O'Day and the Jean Kruber Orchestra were playing Let Me Off Uptown. And he got off the train and entered into this attic, this world. And there were his friends, his other prisoners, number nine. And the sirens went round and round. He started losing his voice and glug, glug, glug. He was not surprised. They'd drunk a keg. It had run out. That was why he'd had the breakdown and seen everybody as he looked at the canal making its way outside the window down. He saw his friends out cold. They were dead to the world. They were just drunk having imbibed the whole keg to Jean Cooper and Anita O'Day with him and she in the courtroom had come in.